During one family night out, two children were running along a hill. The yellow child took hold of a log from the bonfire and held it towards his brother like a torch. The blue brother ran away from his devious yellow brother. Being the devil that he is though, the yellow brother chased after the poor blue brother. Regardless of how the blue brother ran, his hand came in contact with the fire. So what do you think happens in the blue brother's body due to this action? Let's take a look at your nervous system. This is how it looks for an ordinary human being, right? It's a physically connected network of all our cells, tissues, and organs. It allows us to communicate with and react to the environment. Supposing this was the younger brother's hand, what do you think would have happened within the nervous system? Sensory neurons are one of the three types of neurons in the body. These neurons are important for the blue boy situation because they are in charge of detecting the stimuli, which is the fire. Be, may chismis ako be. Ha? Ano naman yun? Tingnan nga to. Nakakaloka. Nakuha ka to sa kumari ko na sensor de decepto. Hoy, sus Mario Josep. Anong gagawin natin? Kalma ka lang, te. Mga intern nga naman. Nakalimutan mo na kaagad yung natutunan mo sa Anafi? Hala, wala akong natutunan doon. This is the sensory organ. In our case, it's the skin. These are specialized cells and tissues that receive raw stimuli and translate them into signals the nervous system can use. Next is the sensory neuron. This is us. When a stimulus stimulates a sensory receptor, it initiates an impulse in a sensory neuron. This sensory neuron then travels to the spinal cord where it passes its information to an interneuron. Next, the spinal cord. Most sensory neurons and vertebrates do not travel directly to the brain, but instead synapse in the spinal cords. This enable faster reflex action to occur by activating spinal motor neurons without the delay caused by signal transmissions through the brain. Here we have interneurons, one of the three types of neurons that relay sensory signal to the brain then returns the message back to motor neurons. Lastly, we have motor neurons. One of the three types of neurons that passes the message coming from the brain to the rest of the body. Oh, ano pang hinihintay mo? Stick to protocol. Bigay mo to sa nervous system. Chop chop. Sige boss. Ep ep ep. Hanggang dito ka lang nak. Aba manong. Bakit may paharang pa? You work ends here, kid. Your afferent nerves are only responsible for sensing a stimulus. It is our job as interneurons to transmit this information to the brain. Tabe! Tinitrigger mo ko eh. Gagawin ko na ngayon yung trabaho ko. Bahala ka. In order to figure out how all the neurons transmit their messages with each other, it is best to use the model of a standard neuron. The axon is the long extension that carries electrical impulses away from the body and towards the terminal axon. At the end of the axon, we have the terminal axon, which passes the signal to the next cell. The cell body is also known as the soma. It contains the nucleus and the organelles of a neuron. These are the dendrites. They are the ones in charge of receiving chemical signals from neighboring cells. So in order to know how neurons transmit messages to each other, or how the interneuron will do its job to get to the brain, we'll look at this neuron. We've already made friends with this guy, so how does he actually do his work? Let's put it this way, we know that this part right here is the terminal axon, right? This first neuron will transmit electrical signals to the next axon's dendrites through the synapse. At the synapse, in order to close the gap, electrical signals are translated to chemical signals. Once they've bridged the gap, the signal becomes electric on the other side again. The process repeats from one neuron to neuron, all 86 billion of them transmitting messages up to 180 miles per hour. This mechanism explains how we are able to react to our environment immediately, sometimes without thought. Huh? Ano yun?
An interneuron? Hoy, ano nangyayari? Bigyan mo ko ng info para makatrabaho na ako. Boss, sensor receptors in the hand had picked up this stimulus, sir. We are currently awaiting for your orders. Orders ko? Contact mo na yung mga kinakatawan kong mga motor neurons. Agad-agad. Sabihin mo galawin na nila yung mga kamay natin. Aba, mukhang may paparating na pare kong interneuron, ah. Okay, tapos na recess mga kids. Trabaho na. Mayos ka nga, may uto si boss. Galawin mo raw yung kamay. Suplado ka as ever. Kahit please man lang sana, pero wala. Aray, layan mo nga ako. Sinadya mo yun, no? Kaya di ka mahal ng crush mo. Once upon a time, there lived a little girl named Maria. I have been accustomed to surviving in the busiest streets of the city, wondering as each day was never a new sight. Days could progress like how it was yesterday and the redundancy of living seemed to be a trend here. Overlooking at the buildings, I scanned the place. Moving my eyes as I did so, down from the rats running in the sewers, the rushing of people to jobs or places where they have to, and up to the tallest buildings that were racing on who reaches the sky first. Stopping at the nearest pedestrian lane, I look over both sides and wonder what life would be if I did not take the risk of living in the city. Walking down the street, I walk past the bakery, stopping as a familiar smell hit my senses, taking me back to what felt like yesterday. The sound of distant birds chirping in subtle rays of sun peeking through the window was the scene, one sunny afternoon. There was a girl sleeping soundly in her bed, feeling the embrace of warm as she dreamed, that smell coming from somewhere woke her up from slumber. What could that be? Minutes later, she was called by someone from downstairs. She knew who that voice belonged to. How could she forget? She hurriedly jumped from the bed and ran out of excitement. Her face lit up and she quickly extended her neck to peek out into the kitchen where her mother was cooking. Her mother turned around with a bowl in her hand and that distinct smell of happiness in a bowl. It was her all-time favorite, champurado. Hearing her mother calling her was indeed what she needed the most. Maria ran towards her mother. Suddenly, she was lifted up by her mother, looking side by side as she memorized her mother's face. It was pure bliss being in those arms again. They both sat at the dining table in delight. Oh, she missed this. She opened her mouth to grab a spoonful of the champurado. It has brought a whole new sensation onto her. Finishing the bowl without hesitation, she devoured it within seconds. A feeling of both happiness and longingness washed over her face. And that, my children, was the story of Maria and her 12 cranial nerves. The end.